G'day car enthusiasts, what you're looking at is a Nissan Skyline. Actually, it's a 1987 Pintara with a Skyline running line dropped in it. And I'm making this video because I'm actually selling this car tomorrow after having it for nearly two decades. It's been a great car. I've driven it across the country a couple of times. It's served me well, but it's going to the next generation tomorrow where a young guy is picking it up. I didn't want to let it go. I've had it mothballed for at least the last three years. And it's the end of an era. So I thought, well, I'll make a video before I say goodbye to it, as it's been through a lot with me. So you're probably familiar with the classic Nissan Skyline, and it came out in the Pintara and the Skyline, which was essentially the exact same body with a few little differences here and there, namely the engine. And what was interesting about the Nissan Pintara is that the four cylinder had eight spark plugs. So there was two spark plugs per cylinder, which was quite interesting back in those days. But at, at the end of, and that was actually a very good engine. The, the Pintara four cylinder, two liter engine was very, very good. But of course, this is the classic six cylinder, straight six, three liter. This one's non-turboed. But as you can see, there's a lot of room in there to drop a turbo in. I've got this on trickle charge at the moment because it's been, as I said, in storage for some time and mothballed and when the guy picks it up tomorrow, I want it good to go. But you can drop a big turbo in here. There's a, a range of turbos that you can drop in here, but this is the same engine that was used in the Commodore VL. And all they did was change this rocker cover and put um, Holden on it. But it was, it is a Nissan engine and a great engine. This engine's got well, I think it's got over 200,000 kilometers on it. And I can't tell because the, the old speedo on this thing died, as in the cluster. So I can't actually see what's happening with the odometer because that's not ticking over either. Uh, there's 200,000 kilometers on the clock of this car, but it had an engine change halfway through it. So I'm not actually sure how many Ks are on it. Nonetheless, I've given this car a lot of love and um, a few little adjustments here and here, here and there, namely um, the 18 inch wheels, which made it handle a lot better and of course lowered it as well with sport suspension. The worst thing about this car is the brakes. The brakes, this car is desperately under braked, um, especially for the amount of power it's got. Uh, this isn't, you know, my daily driver is um, a six series Beamer, uh, ironically of the same size this, but it's a twin turbo, my Beamer. So it's a three litre engine, but twin turbo eight speed and about 30 years difference in it. But this car is a great car. And with little adjustments like the k &N filter there, that gave it a few more kilowatts. And I put an exhaust on it, that gave it a few more kilowatts. Then you just really look after it and that maintains some of the kilowatts. But walking around this car, I'm sorry it's quite zoomed in. Some of the things I've done is these, these tints, they're probably too dark. Uh, but the back window is legal. And I also, a bit of trivia for you here, these are the afterburner tail lights. Now, these only came out in the skyline. Some call them hot plates, some call them afterburner. But car enthusiasts know that this, for the skyline, this pattern here, there was a piece of plastic here that continued along in the skyline and it made it one consistent shape all the way across. Whereas the Pintara, had this gap here. And a couple of guys called me up on it once and said, is it a Pintara or is it a Skyline? Is it a Pintara or a Skyline? And they're sort of fighting with each other, um, you know, just with a bit of banter saying, what type of car is this? And I said, well, actually you're both right. It's, it's a Pintara with a Nissan Skyline running line. Now, the reason why you get confused is because it's, it's pretty much identical. The body is certainly identical. There was adjustments in the tail lights because remember not all the skylines had the hot plate tail lights some of the skylines just had the bar um, tail lights but when i did the the engine change so i took the whole running line out which is the engine the diff and the gearbox and when i looking inside this beast with the classic blue interior I also changed the steering wheel, which gave it another one kilowatt, kidding.
but it, it certainly felt much better with a sport steering wheel. And although you can drift this car and they're great for drifting, I never really drifted this because it's, it's my baby and so I'm sorry to see it go. But a bit of um, trivia for you here, when I changed the gearbox, so in the Pintara, this little coin tray here, in the Pintara, this, this whole piece here actually turns around and that coin tray would be here. And the reason why that is, is because it's a four cylinder in the engine when it's a Pintara. So the whole gearbox moves this much more forward. And when you have the skyline, you've got two more cylinders, so it drops back. So this actually has to spin around. So that was, I think if you're a, a real Nissan car enthusiast and you can't actually see under the bonnet, so you're looking at a car through, I don't know, the window, that, that's actually a, a giveaway. If this is at the back, it's a four cylinder because the gear stick is further forward. And if it's a six cylinder, this comes forward because it, you've got to move the gear stick back. And I actually did notice when I was driving it every day and I had to have the gear stick further back. And I've actually learned that not having the gear pattern on this is apparently now illegal, but I, I'd never heard of that. I, apparently you've got to have a gear pattern here so you know what gear it is. But this is a five speed um, with the, six, the reverse down here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this thing will just cruise all day. There's not really much to report on in the dash because it's just so simple. This whole panel here is for the digital clock, which is up here. And there's a blank panel here that's fallen out. And of course, in the silhouette and the higher versions of this car, these buttons actually did something. But in my, my beast, uh, they're just blank plates. And over here on the other side, you could make things pretty fancy with making the dash brighter or darker two whole buttons for that look at that. and they're massive buttons as well to make it brighter and darker but these blank plates as you start to um, modify the car and do stuff with the car you can actually it's really handy to put stuff in those blank plates now a very common problem in these cars is the cluster died so the cluster gets um dry and I guess corroded behind the scenes and they don't work anymore. So my fuel gauge doesn't work and the speedo doesn't work, but the taco does. And that's what's great about this car. It would be better if nothing died, but the reality is, is that it does die except for the taco. The taco keeps going hard and strong and let's face it, that's all you really need. So what I did was I put a, a digital, um, it, it looks like a, a radar detector. It's not because it's passive. It doesn't send out any signal. And I put this bit of blue tack here because there's a, a big bright green light that was too bright when you're driving. It was just shining in my eye. So with complete ingenuity, I put a bit of blue tack there and that stopped this bright light shining in my eyes. But this is a digital speedo, uh, which works perfectly, except for when you're in a tunnel because it doesn't pick up the GPS. What else is there to talk about in here? Upgraded stereo. Blue interior, and that is pretty much it. You're looking at a car that's 1987, so it's many years old. Nearly 30, and this dash is in pristine condition. These little shiny things here, I just, I bought from Korea, and I just stuck them on there to make it look cool. I don't know if it looks cool. It looks probably pretty tacky and what it also actually did was it restricted the airflow a little bit because they're just things that you stick on to make it look shiny but as a result they make the vents slightly more blocked up so it actually slowed down the airflow which I could actually really feel in summer air conditioning works brilliantly on this car some of the common issues with this little plate would fall off the other thing is these little knobs they'd actually break away so you'd have to go to a wrecker and and just if you will, pinch, uh, let's say buy. We'd buy some of these from a wrecker and you pull them off and put them straight on. But that was quite common. In this car, they were actually silver. They're the same silver as this. But when I bought new ones, they were, I got the black ones to match it there. Um, 
other than that, what was cool about this car, a quirk or a feature, is that this was lumbar support in the seat, which was kind of ahead of its time. You click that and you've got great lumbar support, great lumbar support, well, some lumbar support. It actually made an adjustment here in the seat. So that was pretty cutting edge technology at the time, especially on a standard car, because what you're looking at, this is standard as, but um, except for the engine component where I've changed it up. What I also really like about this car is the paint. Now, you're looking at 30-year-old paint. Look at this. This hasn't been resprayed. This is the original paint. Admittedly, I've looked after this car very well, and I've kept it under shelter, and it's had a few coats of polish, but I haven't done anything too flash to it, and it has done its time in the sun. Look at that. That's 30-year-old paint, and that's Australian paint. So well done, Australia, um, for making paint like that. In the back seat, nothing too flash to report on here, just blue, although it did have an armrest, which was cool. Um, again, in 87, that was pretty cool. And the seats fold down like that. So it, the, the bad thing about these seats folding down is that it wasn't the whole seat, it's just sort of like this little compartment here. And, but what is good is that you didn't have to reach through anywhere. You could just grab this and you had access to it straight away, um, which was really good because you didn't have to do that thing where you have to reach into the back of your boot or somewhere else to get access to your boot. But it was bad because it's so thin, as in it's, it doesn't drop that far down, that you can't really get that much room into the boot. So you've got a couple of tow ropes in the back. That'll all be taken out tomorrow when I sell it. But overall, there's, I don't really know what else I can say about this car, except I'll start her up so you can hear this beast in action. Uh, noting that this will be, this is the sound of the six cylinder, three liter monster. A uh, bit of a fun fact working with a three decade year old car is that it's got three keys. <laughs> one for the boot, one for the ignition, and one for the door. Uh, as a result of locks dying over time, I had to get different locks with different keys. And that last key is for the steering lock. So there's actually four keys. Boot, door, ignition, and steering lock. But let's fire up the old girl. As Dino probably thinks we're going to... Dino, up. In the back. He thinks we're going for a drive. All right, let's do this thing. Green key for go. Come on, old girl. There we go. Come on. There we go. And after 30 years, she still purrs like a kitten. I take.